Hi everyone and welcome to Green Monk TV. Uh, today we're doing a special report on SAP's integrated report uh, of 2012. Now, normally on this site you'd be used to me talking about the SAP sustainability report. It comes out once a year and they have quarterly updates. What they've done this year for the first time, it's something they've been talking about doing for a while, but they've, for the first time now, they've brought out an integrated report, which is a combined report combining their financial report for the, for the year with their sustainability report. And you can see up here on, this, on the report, they've called it their financial and non-financial performance report. It's an online report. You can download a PDF of it as well. You can see the link just here. The download uh, is obviously, <laughs> it's obviously uh, not interactive in the same way that the site is interactive. You can see the site is at sapintegratedreport.com. So what's so different about this report? Well, as I said, it's, it combines both the financial and the sustainability performance for the year. There's an about this report section, which talks about the report. It goes into materiality and it also says why SAP are doing integrated reporting. They have a key facts section, which gives, as you would imagine, key facts, but also five-year summaries, chart generators, and connecting financial and non-financial performance. We'll come back to that. Uh, it's interesting. There is, to the stakeholders, the usual things, the letters from the CEO, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, independent annual auditors report, stuff you'd expect both uh, in the uh, sustainability report and the financial report. There's the performance for the year with a couple of top level uh, numbers there, talking about the engagement uh, score for employees at 79% and CO2 at 485 kilotons for the year 2012, which is five kilotons above the target CO2 set for itself. Uh, you have partner ecosystems, research and development, overall financial position, risk report, outlook, performance statements, all the kind of things you'd expect in both the financial and the sustainability reports. You have an additional information section, uh, which we won't be going into too much detail on. It's kind of uh, indexes, background, glossary, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you have a My Download Center, which is new, and we'll come back to that as well. So in the About This Report section, uh, the, the, the most, potentially the most interesting thing here is the why integrated reporting. So if I click on that quickly, they give an indication here of the thinking behind integrating the two reports. And in a conference call we had uh, with uh, Peter Graf and with uh, Christopher Hutton, uh, the chief accounting officer of, of, of SAP, uh, they, they talked about why they went for integrated reporting and the steps that were involved in it. And obviously, by, uh, by having two reports, you're addressing two uh, audiences. But by combining them, you bring the two audiences together and you get one report, uh, which can potentially address, you know, if, if someone is interested in both financial and sustainability information, now they get it all in one report and they get it interconnected, which is more interesting in itself. Um, the key fact, oh, uh, one other thing before I come off this page, on several places throughout the site, You'll see this on the right-hand sidebar here, where it asks questions and you have a chance to submit an answer. So uh, in this case, do we have comprehensive connectivity between non-financial and financial KPIs? And you have an option to say, uh, yes, the connectivity is comprehensive. You need to build stronger argumentation for the connectivity. You are lacking key social KPIs. You are lacking key environmental KPIs. You are lacking key financial KPIs. And before you submit that, you have an option as well. And it is an option. You don't have to choose, but you have an option to say whether you're a customer, financial analyst, employee, NGO, IT analyst, government, or partner. So you submit that. And let's say... I decide that I think SAP are missing some key environmental KPIs. I can say I'm from an IT analyst background and I can vote on that and it'll come back with a results saying that I am one of 
only 8%, 8.7% of people who think that. The majority of people, 65% of people say, yes, the connectivity is comprehensive. So you can also add a personal note to the page and add this page to my downloads in this part up here. So the add this page to my downloads, if I click that, well, I'll put a personal note in it first. So I can, I can type that in there quickly. This is the explanation of why SAP went for integrated reporting. You can save that note and then you can add that to the download or it's automatically added to the download center up here. You can see the number has gone up from zero which it was, to one. Uh, there are also uh, links here to the conversation. So the SAP, or sorry, the hashtag SAP integrated is brought from Twitter and printed out or displayed on this page here and on several pages throughout the site. So that's that. That was the key, f the key fact section, or sorry, the about this report section. It goes into materiality as well, and it talks about the report and so on, as you would expect. The key facts section is interesting um, because, as you would uh, expect, you get the key facts about the uh, financial reports, the research and developments, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, employee numbers, uh, percentage of female managers, that kind of thing, greenhouse gas emissions, and they're done here. You can see as you as you mouse over them, they change color to make it easy to follow the numbers across the columns. And you can see, as I said, greenhouse gas emissions uh, down from last year's 490 to this year's 485, but still five above target. That's kilotons and so on down along. What's also interesting, though, about this and sorry, each of these or most of these are links to individual pages explaining the data. So if I wanted to have a quick look at the greenhouse gas emissions in kilotons, click on it there and bang, we're into a page on that. Uh, and you can explore the data with our chart generator. We'll come back to that. I'll go, I'll hit the back button. The other interesting thing on the key facts <clears throat> is the chart, or sorry, is the five year summary. This is nice because now, as well as changing color when you mouse over, you get a chart displayed showing you the uh, trends across the, pr the last five years. So things like uh, employees and personal expenses, number of employees, year-end and full-time equivalents, uh, women in percentage terms, personal expenses going up there, uh, uh, research and development expenses, they're spending a lot on research and development as a percentage of total revenue, seems to have flatlined for the last three years as a percentage of operating expenses and so on and so on. And these data are also available or trends are available for the non-financial uh, data as well so very nice <clears throat> very easy to digest uh, the chart generator going in there uh, gives us uh, charts on Revenue and income, liquidity, R&D, financial employees, environment. Just looking at the financial, sorry, the, the employees for a second, you can see things like the age groups of employees across the last five years. And you can see the vast majority of employees are in the 30 to uh, 50 uh, years uh, group uh, all across. Uh, you get the financial performance measures, earnings per share, uh, liquidity, cash flows, uh, revenue and income, all the kind of stuff you'd expect in a financial report. And then you have the environmental, the greenhouse gas emissions, energy consumption, renewable energy, a nice story here, renewable energy in 2009, uh, fossil fuels being 64%, going to 41, going to 40, and in 2012, going to 29, and the total renewable energy in 2012 was 60%, made up of 24% solar, 34% hydro, 2% other, the 2% other is things like biogas, 11% uh, from nuclear, which is a low carbon footprint as well, which is nice. So, uh, those are all nice details. Uh, if we go back over here and look at things like the greenhouse gas emissions, 
again we see that and you can slice and dice this a number of ways it's, this is absolute greenhouse gas emissions you can do it by employee by euro revenue and in each case it's dropping you can do it by region uh, or you can do it by scope of emissions one thing that is missing uh, it would be nice if for example we could uh, see if we could uh, sorry, dig into these just by clicking on any of these and get more information on those. Uh, and the same with the energy consumption. We see, for example, when it comes to energy consumption, that um, the data center electricity accounts for 19% of the energy consumption. Uh, I'd like to know a little more detail about that. How is it done for cloud computing versus other consumption, uh, etc. But you know, still, it's all very nicely presented, very easy to access. And again, you can access it across the years and slice and dice it by employee, by revenue, that kind of thing as well. So all quite nice there. Um, the uh, That's the, the key facts area. Uh, the connecting financial and non-financial performance uh, is a nice little one as well. It talks about how these... Um, different kind of silos of data are actually interconnected and you can see the the ones you'd expect uh, the financial ones the revenue and things like that these top four here have got stars in them and the stars correspond to the fact that those are the kind of four key targets that SAP are going after uh, as, a, as a corporation as a company if we look at things like uh, greenhouse gas footprint we can see that that's interconnected to almost everything. Um, it's, in, it's, it's connected to employer ranking because uh, SAP are perceived as um, a better employer uh, if they have a lower greenhouse gas footprint. So someone in the jobs market looking at potential employers sees that SAP has a lower greenhouse gas footprint, uh, then they have a better opinion of SAP and they want to work for them, is the theory. And you can scroll down and you see there's an explanation of each of these arrows here. Um, similarly, uh, the BHCI is the uh, business health, I'm going to forget what that stands for now, it's explained down here, business health culture index, and it's basically a measure of um, uh, goodness of the company if you want uh, it, it's better explained uh, lower down on the page um, you can see as well uh, the greenhouse gas footprint affects employee engagement for similar reasons it affects revenue uh, because lowering your greenhouse gas footprint should have a positive eff effect on your your revenue by lowering your costs uh, customer success similarly reputational uh, the inputs into greenhouse gas footprint come from energy consumed, data center energy, and renewable energy, as you would imagine. And you can see the other connections are there as well. Things like employer ranking uh, has uh, big connections on operating margin, on employee engagement. Uh, the inputs come from the uh, greenhouse gas footprint, etc., etc. So you can follow it all yourself there. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's the key facts section. I'm not going to go through all of the, I'm not going to go through any <laughs> of the to our stakeholders one. You can check that out yourself if you're interested. Uh, the performance one, again, some nice reports there uh, going to the energy and emissions one, for example. You can see uh, reports here on greenhouse gas emissions, energy consumed, data center energy, renewable energy. So and again, if you're interested, you can add that page to your downloads and the number goes up here to number two. And there's a link here to the chart generator. On this side, on the left-hand side of the page, you can have, you see this little tab coming out, sticking out here. Clicking on that allows you quick access to some of the other uh, reports. There's the waste and water report that you can just go straight into and you can see the, the data corresponding to that. And you can also go to any of the other ones, any of the other things like so, for example, if you're interested in the employees and social investment, that's there as well. So uh, lots, lots of information easily available. You've got performance statements here as well, corresponding to those uh, and an Excel download of those. Uh, in the additional information, 
not a huge amount there that we'd normally be interested in. Again, it's notes on things like the GRI index and, and compact. But if we go to the My Download Center, finally, you can see here there's the two personal uh, reports that I added to the Download Center. You also have uh, Excel tables uh, of various consolidated statements. You have graphics you can bring down. Uh, and interestingly, for the first time, uh, SAP always brought out their, or not always, but for the last few years, they brought out their financial reports in an XBRL format. Now, they're also bringing out their sustainability information in terms of an XBRL report. And XBRL is a machine-readable form. So now, their sustainability information will be available in a machine-readable format. And it's going to be interesting to see how that works out uh, in, in, in the coming few months and years and see what people make of it. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, on the conference call, there's just one more thing. On the conference call that I partook in, uh, Peter Graf made one call out at the end when he was introducing this report, where he said uh, that SAP wants to co-innovate with others in the sustainability or financial space on bringing integrated reporting to everyone with the lowest possible cost and the highest co possible precision. So SAP wants to make this kind of technology, this kind of uh, integrated report. They, they don't want to be the only ones doing it. They want to make this kind of stuff available to everyone. So kudos to them for that. Uh, and if you're in this space, the sustainability or the financial reporting space, and you're interested in getting involved in sustainability reporting, get in touch with Peter Graf and see how you can get uh, involved in it. Okay, thanks very much.